Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. Today I'll be discussing and painting the Garanook in gouache for the current ungulates round of the Animal Artist Collective. And remember, $7 patrons get all my new longer private YouTube videos, free passes to my six previous Skillshare videos, along with many other info dance deconstructed art and Q&A post video notes and sketch downloads. Thanks for parking your brushes here and let the epic painting adventures begin. So I'll be using my Creative Color Aqua Bricks as gouache and brownish purple color scheme. So probably Mars Violet the sienna so we'll see how that goes but that's my plan for now since i'm going to be using gouache today used my creta color aqua bricks as gouache and that's mostly wet on dry using the tiling and mid-tone methods which i've discussed in other videos and i'll also define in a patreon post that's going to be public and free for this video i used a little bit of wet and wet for the background in the sky but even that was closer to wet on dry than the kind of wet and wet that we do for watercolor and for the rest of the piece it really was wet on dry in this case you just sort of develop the whole painting in patches. The color scheme I used was brown, violet, and white, and that was pretty much it. That's why it's a very limited color scheme, and I do like the mood that it gives this piece, but I think if I wanted to do these animals again in the future, maybe I'll do them in a more variegated color scheme so I can, you know, have a, a different mood and also a different sort of perspective on them. Gouache, when you are doing wet on dry and tiling, there really isn't that much more to discuss because you don't really switch methods over and over again. You're basically just sort of jigsawing in the these various puzzle pieces in a mosaic type style so you can just sort of see those color patches develop and for different types of pieces you'll have hard and soft edges because these are furry mammals most of these tiles end up having blended edges that I end up blending softer with whatever the color adjacent to it is so that's basically how I did both of these animals the other participating artists in this AAC round include founders in Liquid Color and Jennifer Charlie, as well as Sade Saves the Day, Amy Howard, Mary Sanchez, Visual Mind, Sarah Newberry, Bonnie Snowden, and me. If you know my channel already, then thanks for being one of my watercolor wizards. And if you don't, and you found your way here as a result of the Animal Artist Collective, then welcome and hope you subscribe. I work in watercolor, gouache, and ink, create info-dense posts and videos on YouTube and Patreon. I'm a university lecturer, and I'm currently teaching art classes at the Santa Cruz Art League and the Santa Cruz Museum of Natural History as well. Please Please make sure you check out the other videos from this round of the Animal Artist Collective. The links to the other participating artist channels are below in my description box and you can also find some more information about the AC down there. I'll signal intervals when I stop speaking with a green and red music note pop-up so you can listen to your own music in those intervals if you choose. Thank you. 
So the Garanook is an antelope that looks like a mini gazelle with an elongated neck and limbs. Its natural range covers the Horn of Africa, stretching from Djibouti, Somalia, Ethiopia, to Kenya and Tanzania. Within this territory, giraffe gazelles generally occur in woody vegetation, deserts, and open scrublands. It's a sole member of the genus Lidiocranius in the family Bovidae of cloven-hoofed ruminant mammals, and it's the longest neck of the gazelles, with its full scientific name being Lidocranius willeri. There are two subspecies here, which are Scleteri, the northern Garanook, and Willeri, the southern Garanook. So the Garanook has a very distinctive long slender neck and legs, almost impossibly thin legs there. And it's pretty small at 31 to 41 inches tall and can weigh between 62 to 115 pounds. Its coloring is a reddish brown saddle on its back with lighter flanks that are buff colored and an underbelly and inside of its legs being cream colored. And I actually had a pet bunny named Clark that had this exact same cream belly and red brown back coloring. So that's what I was thinking as I was painting this. And the Garanook has these really cool large round eyes that make it look really doe-faced and the eyes and mouth are surrounded by white fur so that's a nice emphasis of those features. It's got a pretty small head compared to its body size but really big ears and eyes so from certain angles it can look really goofy and it has a short tail that ends in a black tuft. The horns are only on the males and they're lyre or s-shaped between 10 to 17 inches. Females don't have those horns but they do have a dark patch on their crown and like similar species it runs about 35 miles an hour. Like many other gazelles they have preorbital glands in front of their eyes that emit a tar-like scent-bearing substance that they deposit on twigs and bushes to mark their territory. So that's what those dark protuberances in front of their eyes are. They also have scent glands on their knees that are covered by tufts of hair and between their split hooves. Garanook comes from the Somali word garanug, meaning giraffe-necked. And I've mentioned already that you can also call this the giraffe gazelle due to its resemblance to the giraffe. It basically looks like a little mini giraffe. But garanook is such a fun word to say over and over again that I totally prefer that. The Garanook is diurnal, which means that it does most of its active foraging and feeding mostly during the day. And like goats, it will rest in the shade during high noon. It lives in small herds of two to six members of the same gender, though female herds will also have kids and juveniles among them. And some Garanook males live totally alone. This species in general is known to be less social than most other types of gazelles. In fact, some African tribes dub this animal the queen of shyness because of its shy nature. It's a browsing herbivore and an adaptable eater, eating foliage from trees, bushes, and also herbs, flowers, and fruits, but not grasses. And in fact, the stomach contents of a single Garanook have been found to contain more than 80 different plants. So it actually makes really clever use of its stilt thin legs. It gets up onto its hind legs to reach higher branches better than most other gazelles and antelopes, letting it reach between a whopping six to eight feet high. So if you visualize it, giraffes will be eating much higher, other gazelles will be eating much lower, and the Garanook gets these choice, moist, tasty leaves right in the middle that no one else is eating. And this animal is also not much of a fighter or a traveler and that's presumably because it's saving energy for foraging and another weird thing is that it doesn't drink water regularly getting most or all of its hydration from moisture rich plants like succulents and other plants that other herbivores can't reach which means it can survive in an arid desert environment in fact in areas where other animals might be escaping to but they don't have a water source those animals will die out but the garanook can survive without an actual water source and just get all of its water from the plants that it's eating it has been known to expose itself to 
rain when the rain is available to cool itself off. Just another thing that makes it a little bit of a weirdo. It's got that small wedge-shaped head and also that pointed mouth. And those are also there to assist in it acquiring leaves between thorny vegetation. So just like most things in nature, there's a method to the madness here. Garanooks like to eat acacia species. So I guess I might like the smell of many of my watercolors as the gum from acacia trees is a watercolor medium binder. Its major predators include leopards, cheetahs, lions, hyenas, South African wild dogs, honey badgers, caracals, servals, and of course, humans. Like goats, they reproduce throughout the year rather than having one breeding season with females coming of age around one year and males at about one and a half years. But breeding is often dependent on acquiring territory, which can take more than three and a half years. Babies are in the womb for seven months, the same amount of time I spent in one, and are born usually one at a time. They weigh about 6.6 .6 pounds at birth, which is almost three times as much as what I weighed when I was born. Yep, that's because I was a preemie. And though these animals are shy, they are very vocal, making buzzing sounds, whistles, and loud and soft bleats to indicate alarm, annoyance, danger, or maternal communication, respectively. Kids will remain hidden in brush while the mothers just return to nurse them three to four times a day. And the moms will also clean calves of milk residue and droppings and other scents before leaving them alone again to remove scents that would allow predators to detect them. Garanook live about eight years in the wild and 13 plus years in captivity. They're currently on the near threatened list and only 10% live in protected areas. And they're right on the threshold of being on the threatened list, in fact, because Garanook populations have decreased 25% over the last 15 years due to humans expanding into their dwindling habitats and because they are hunted as prized trophies for the past 200 years despite their small range. Hopefully art and videos like this can help raise awareness and better protect the Garanook in the long term. I hope you enjoyed learning about and seeing me paint these Garanooks and gouache. This video and artwork for the AC helps raise awareness and support for wildlife so we can prevent gorgeous species like this from being wiped out. You can buy this artwork from me by contacting me via email or messaging me on Instagram or Patreon, and I'll also be putting it into my Etsy shop soon as well. I will donate 50% of my proceeds to the World Wildlife Fund or the National Wildlife Federation, two organizations that I've donated to annually for more than a decade. If you want a more affordable art print, decor, or stationery of my artworks instead, there's plenty in my updated red bubble shop. Please let me know what stood out to you or what you found most useful or anything you have questions about in this video. This sort of input from viewers helps me make more useful videos for viewers and patrons. So please like, comment, and check out my website dashboard for easy access to all my online platform links on a single page to support my art creation and instruction. Thanks for parking your brushes here and wishing y'all epic gouache adventures.